Welcome to Happy Hour, Whiskey Business Edition. It's fall. It's time to start thinking about some whiskey drinking. If you're feeling frisky, it's time to, anyway, whiskey is like barbecue, one of those things where everyone has a very strong opinion about it, how it should be done, who, what region's doing it right, who's doing it right, how to do it. At the end of the day, it comes down to whether or not you enjoy it, like anything, like music, like art. There is a point, like all those things, where maybe some things are just bad and poorly done. But there are many regions that lay claim to whiskey, whiskey dis distillation processes, ingredients, all that stuff, and to which point, you know, they're right. They're right. So it just kind of comes down to what you like and what region speaks to you the most. Now, when I say region, that gets pretty dicey here when we're talking about whiskey. The reason being, whiskey is a worldwide thing. We think of American whiskey as whiskey, but Scotland could probably lay claim to that, right? Ireland could lay claim to that. In fact, whiskey distillation process goes back uh, even to the BC times. Um, uh, in AD times, Greece was making whiskey. This has been a long developing process. Now, the American whiskeys that we lay claim to, uh, USA, USA, uh, would be bourbon or sour mash whiskey. It is a tradition. It is amazing. Scotch is amazing. Irish whiskey is amazing. It turns out Japanese whiskey is also amazing. So what I want to do over the next few episodes is talk about whiskey and where it comes from and why it's called, what it's called, and what the labels mean and all that and speak to it uh, as expertly as I can. But also at the end of the day, I just want to point you towards some brands that I really like and I enjoy in the comfort of my own home. We're here at Salvage Barbecue, speaking of barbecue, because they have a great whiskey selection here. Uh, do they have the biggest whiskey selection in all of Maine? No, but it's very good. So cool it. Anyway, this first episode, we'll talk about just whiskey in general, where it comes from, uh, the process with which it's made, in which it's made, how which it's made, how you make whiskey, and then we'll take it from there. In the following episodes, we're going to talk about specific brands of whiskey, where they came from, and why I like it. It's just that simple. So, without further ado, let's get down to some whiskey business. Whiskey is distilled in stills. What are stills? Stills are barrels made of copper, or in more modern times, lined with copper. Why copper? Well, copper pulls out some of the sulfates from it, the sulfur-based elements, and that would make the whiskey taste bad. So in modern times, cost-cutting probably, uh, just because there are more people drinking whiskey than ever before. And I wonder why. It's been such an easy year. Um, so they will like use copper tubing or lined, lined stainless steel uh, with copper. Uh, in those stills, we are fermenting and distilling a uh, mash, a grain mash. What grains are we using? Well, there are three big grains when we're talking about whiskey. Uh, barley, corn, rye. There are others as well. Grains are grains, but these are the big ones. Um, then you can malt those. Malted barley, for instance. That's where your single malt scotches are coming from, or your malted scotches. Malted whiskeys are a thing that's generally malted barley. So that's what goes in it, and that's where it's made, okay? Next slide. <laughs> Aging whiskey. Well, how do we age whiskey? We age it in barrels, like wine. In fact, sometimes wine barrels are used. Oftentimes, they're sherry casks, they'll call them. Um, and unlike wine, which does mature in the bottle, whiskey ends its maturation process once it's been removed from the barrel. So when you see a bottle that has, you know, 12 years, 18 years, 22, and you also notice the price go whoop, well, the reason is because these people started making that whiskey 
up to 20 years ago, more. I mean, that's kind of crazy if you think about it. That's a real, real long game. So rather than looking at a bottle of whiskey and be like, that's expensive, you should be like, hmm, thank you 18 years ago, people, for putting this together for me and letting it just sit in barrels. Like, who had to like, I mean, some, somebody had to like walk around probably with like a dog and make sure everything was safe and make sure it didn't catch on fire. There's so many things that can go wrong in uh, that period of time. In fact, there have been some disasters uh, with some uh, distilleries where they've lost decades of, uh, of progress, which must be just devastating for them. So just keep in mind that when you're sipping a very perhaps expensive glass of any kind of whiskey, um, that the higher that number, like that, that's just a lot of work that goes in there. So just something to keep in mind when you're buying your whiskey. Next. There are many different types of whiskey, right? You've got, uh, I'm not, not region, we'll get into regions in a second, but uh, you've got your bourbon whiskeys, corn whiskeys, uh, malt whiskeys, rye whiskeys, um, malted rye whiskey, uh, wheat whiskey, which I personally have never had before, um, grain whiskeys, blended whiskeys. Here's an example of a blended whiskey, Crown Royal. You've probably been offered a glass of this at your Aunt Gladys's house before. Um, Canadian, Canada produces a lot of whiskey. Then you have your cask strength whiskeys as well, um, oftentimes referred to as single barrels. Those can be very, very precious in particular. They oftentimes will be numbered bottles, you know, uh, kind of like uh, exclusive art prints and stuff like that. But then there are also some uh, larger companies like Four Roses that makes a uh, delicious single barrel whiskey. So like anything, you can go as high as you want with that. But then there's also in between, uh, you know, uh, very good and uh, I'm Richard Branson and can buy whatever I want. There are many, many, many options here and many of them are super, super delicious. Just for the everyday folk like myself. I don't, I don't I'm not a billionaire. I know, I'm sorry to disappoint you. It looks like I'm a billionaire, but I'm not. So I like to find those really tasty bottles that you can really, uh, sip, sit, and enjoy. Next frame. Regions. Now, if you push the camera in, you can get as specific as you want. You can get down to the town. You can get down to the year. You can talk about the weather that year as to whether or, or why a specific whiskey tastes a certain way. Um, you know, it's in the wood, it's in the air, it's in the water, it's all this stuff. But if you pull the camera back out, You've got the American South, you've got Japan, we've got Scotland and Ireland. Now, of course, there are whiskeys made all over the world, but I'm gonna go ahead and say those are the big four. No shade to Canada, one of the world's biggest producers of whiskey, also great neighbors, thanks a lot, guys, doing great. Um, but I'm gonna just look at these four regions moving forward. Okay, let's go over to the American South. We're pr uh, predominantly talking about uh, Kentucky and Tennessee. Now they both make bourbon, but Kentucky labels theirs bourbon, not because of like a, a line uh, in the snow, but because of the process in which it's made. Tennessee whiskey is filtered through uh, sugar maple charcoal. Other than that, it's the same process. It's, they're, they're, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mash, uh, distilled, aged in barrels. Uh, and it's gonna have that sweeter taste because it's made with corn, okay? Let's shoot over to Japan. Many of you might not even know that there's a whiskey scene in Japan, unless of course, I mean, okay. My first introduction to it was that, uh, that Bill Murray movie, Lost in Translation. Um, it's not a Bill Murray movie, he's in the movie, and he does that commercial for Suntory time, for relaxing times, right? So that was like the first time, like what? Uh, Japanese whiskey, but like that's been blowing up for years and now is uh, garnering worldwide acclaim and, and being held in uh, high esteem with uh, older regions. So let's go over to Europe. Irish whiskey, we're talking about Jameson, we're talking about Powers, we're talking about, oh, we're talking about Powers because I'm holding Powers, we're talking about Bushmills. It's a handsome bottle too, isn't it? Um, there's also a single malt. Irish whiskey that I'll love to feature moving forward called Napa Castle. It's a single malt Irish whiskey. It is smooth, but also a little more complex than some of maybe the other brands that I had mentioned. Uh, also makes the best hot toddy, in my opinion, 
you can possibly have. Um, and then, of course, we'll go over to Scotland. I mean, I, I think that if you were to narrow uh, whiskey regions down to two, you'd look at the American South and you'd look at Scotland. Again, no offense to the other regions and everyone working so hard to make good whiskey there, but when you're talking about the big dogs, you're talking about the Beatles and the Stones, right? Sorry. So, um, scotch. Hey, I have a bottle of scotch here. This is Laphroaig. Right, that is aged 10 years. Thank you 10 years ago, people, for making me my drinks. Um, and it's from Islay. So there are many regions within Scotland uh, that all have their own pretty different characteristics. Uh, but I guess if you kind of pull the camera back, just like the American South, this tastes like this. Over here tastes a little bit different. And same with Scotland, except I will say with, with some of these, like the, the flavor profiles are, are widely different. Some are much more peaty, some are smoother, some are sweeter. Um, and, you know, we're talking about uh, huge brands uh, that we all kind of know. Like, obviously, like you've got your, your blended, the Johnny Walkers. Those are blended, kind of like um, Crown Royal. Uh, we're talking about uh, Glen Fittich, uh, Balvini. Um, Glen Morangi makes a uh, cask conditioned one is, uh, in sherry casks. It's called the Kinteruban, which I like because I'm being more of a bourbon person. Corn makes the bourbon a little sweeter, so I like the sweeter drink. It's funny, I like, I like dry, drier cocktails, but my whiskey, I like to have like, sweeter notes. Um, they, it's aged in these sherry barrels, which pulls the sweetness from there. So it's, as a scotch, it's actually pretty sweet, but it's still a scotch. So those are our regions. Cool. So that's my whiskey spiel. Hopefully you found it informative. I found it informative as I did more and more reading. So in the coming episodes, I'm going to show you some specific bottles from specific regions. We're going to talk about why they taste like they taste. But ultimately, I'm just choosing bottles that I like, that I think you'll enjoy. The reason I like whiskey, as opposed to cocktails, even though I do run a cocktail uh, show program here, um, I do like cocktails, don't get me wrong, but to me, and maybe other whiskey drinkers will agree, that a nice glass of whiskey is a cocktail. If you get a good, if you get a good whiskey, like you're pulling different flavors. Okay, picture this. Nice cool fall day, comfy chair, maybe leather. You're in your comfy clothes, maybe a nice sweater, Oof, right? Feeling cozy, sitting down with a glass of whiskey made thoughtfully from a region that's been doing it for hundreds of years in some cases. And you take a sip, you consider your day, and you consider each and every flavor you're tasting. That's why I like whiskey. Whiskey is to be savored, is to be enjoyed. Um, and it's why it's, it's why it's one of my go-tos. And if you're watching this, I assume it's one of yours. So in the coming episodes, we will show you some bottles of whiskey that you might like. Sound good? Okay, great. This has been Happy Hour, brought to you by Maine Spirits. You can learn more about, uh, well, whiskey at mainspirits.com. You can download their app for your smartphone, which is a smart move, what to buy, where to buy it, and what to do with it once you get it. You can follow them on Instagram at main underscore spirits. But as always, we implore you to drink deliciously and responsibly.